The single most confusing feature in Vim has got to be tabs. The first time I wanted to edit more than one file in Vim, I did something like this. Type Vim and then one file name and then the file name of the other file. And then I saw that, well cool, now we have one tab open with one of the file names, but why is there not a second tab with the other file name? Where did that go? And so I googled how to open a file in a new tab in Vim. And the solution I came across was, well, tab new and then the file name. And now we have a second tab with the other file name and we can switch between tabs with tab next. Later, I found out that this is not how Vim was designed and this is not how tabs are supposed to be used. And Vim features don't simply map one-to-one -to, -one to features in another IDE. And actually, Vim's features are far more powerful than what you would find in a normal IDE. I think the confusion comes from the fact that in Vim, we have tabs, windows, and buffers. A buffer is simply the in-memory text of a file. We can see our current buffers with the ls command. So now we have the text of the concurrency and the request file loaded into memory. A window, on the other hand, is a viewport on a buffer. For example, the current window shows the content of the concurrency.py file. Now we can create a vertical split with the vsp command. And now we have two windows, or in other words, two viewports on the same buffer, but we can load any buffer into any viewport. For example, if I want to see the requests file on the right, I can type B and then the name of the buffer, and in this way display a different buffer in that window. So now, what are tabs then? Well, a tab page is basically a collection of windows. If you paid very close attention, you might have noticed that next to the requests tab, we now have a number two. This number represents the number of windows we have in this tab. So if now I create another split, then you can see this number incremented by one. And now it shows that we have three windows here. If I head over to the requests tab, we have the same buffer loaded as in the previous tab, but we only have a single window here. What we could do now is create another kind of layout here. For example, split this horizontally, then split this vertically, and maybe split this vertically again. So now each tab contains a different collection of windows, or you could also call it layouts. I believe layouts would have been a much better naming for the tabs feature. It would have been much less confusing. Now if I head over to VS Code and open a file, Lord of Mercy, then what we can see is that there's no distinction between a tab, a buffer and a window. We opened a file, a tab is created, the tab is also the current window and it's also the file. We cannot display anything else inside of this tab. Now if I open up another file, we could create a split by dragging it to the right, for example. But this is not the same as what you have in Vim because, again, you cannot display anything else inside of this same window. If we open a new file, then it will automatically create a new tab. So there's a one-to-one -one relationship between windows, tabs, and buffers. And that's the main difference and where I believe the main confusion comes from. Now I want to make a case for the Vim way of doing things. Here in VS Code, I only opened up three files and I'm already running out of space to display more open files. In contrast, in Vim, open files are represented with buffers and you can see them in this vertical menu. So you could easily pull up 30 files and still be able to see all of them very easily. The tabs feature in Vim of course suffers from the same problem. You cannot have 20 tabs here and still be able to see all of them. But the thing with Vim tabs is that you just don't need that many. I very rarely find myself having more than two or three tabs open. In fact, in my NeoVim configuration, let's head over there. In my NeoVim setup, I don't even display tabs at all. Even though you could show them in Lua line in theory, which I might add in the future, but I replaced the tab bar with a plugin called Bufferline. And Bufferline, essentially Bufferline gives you this tab bar that you know from VS Code and other editors. Well, of course, Bufferline suffers from the same limitations. Personally, I like to have it 
for when I have less than five files open. But as soon as it gets a bit more complex, then I would use telescope to jump between buffers more easily. And regarding tabs, I just use the native Vim tabs feature. Because as I said, I usually only manage one to three tabs. Next, I want to give you a quick use case suggestion for Vim tabs. In my main tab, I have the files that I'm currently editing in full widescreen view. And then I would have a, another tab where I'm developing tests and I split those to see the functions that I'm developing tests for in one split and then the test functions I'm developing in the other split. So I can very easily see the original code and the tests side by side. But if I want to keep editing my main files, then I can just go to my main tab and have everything back in full screen. Another use case I could imagine if you're working in monolithic repos is have front-end code in one tab, back-end in another, and then docs or tests in a third one, for example. So yeah, tabs in Vim, they're basically layouts. Use them to organize your workspace, not your files. And if you're still using one tab per file, don't worry, I did that for way too long. We can form a support group. Cheers.